Good morning everyone. Today we are going to look into spread spectrum techniques. Uh, that's a big topic and in today's class we will look into PN sequences or pseudo noise sequences. So please mark your attendance in the live chat. Before going into what is PN sequence, we look what is spread spectrum. So spread spectrum is a means of communication. See in which see till now we were concentrating on saving the bandwidth and saving the power. But in spread spectrum, we are not going into focus into those two things. But we are we want some other properties. One property that we desire is secure communication. So we trade off. Uh, so we give up our restrictions on bandwidth and power to make our communication secure. So secure right to communicate here we have bandwidth and power and power. But now we will not look into saving the bandwidth and saving the power. But we will look at we will uh, try to have secure communication. So to have secure communication, we will cut the bandwidth to the power extra use the power saving the power saving and the power saving the power saving. So that is actually spread spectrum. So spread spectrum is a means of communication which data sequence occupies a bandwidth in excess of the minimum bandwidth required. And second, what to do is the data is spread by using a code independent of the data sequence at the transmitter before transmission and is de spread using the same code at the receiver. So, we will transmit in a number, number of data, number spread D. So, when we do spreading, obviously bandwidth will increase. Okay. And at the receiver, we will use the same code to despread. So, these two should work in synchronism. Spreading and despreading at the transmitter and the receiver respectively should work in synchronism. And what happens is, it uh, spread spectrum reject interference. There can be intentional interference and unintentional interference. Both are rejected in spectrum communication. So, it provides a form of secure communication at the expense of bandwidth and power. Okay. Now, let's see uses of spread spectrum. It is mainly used in military communications. Uh, see, in military, uh, we require jamming or we have our uh, equipments have to be resistance. Communication is to be resistance to interference. So, enemies will try to uh, tap the data and leak the information. So, it should be resistant to interference. So, in such cases, we use spread spectrum techniques. And in ground-based mobile radio communication, we use spread spectrum to reject multipath reject, uh, to reject multipath components. So, that is another use of spread spectrum technique. Also, when we use multiple access communication in which a number of independent users are required to share a common channel, without external synchronizing mechanisms. <coughs> there also we use this spread spectrum techniques. So where where do we use spread spectrum? When there are multiple access communication. And we are actually referring to CDMA. Okay. So multiple access communication in which there are a number of independent users. They have to share a common channel. There we use spread spectrum specifically view cdma cdma is a type of spread spectrum so we will see that later uh, about the details of this in the later uh, in the next class but today we will look into one of the uh, basic components which is required for spread spectrum communication that is called pn sequences so pn sequence or pseudo noise sequence see avada namukku rendu vaakal undu nu pseudo it's a it's a it's a mimicking the noise. So what happens is see this sequences will have the property of noise, but it, these sequences are not exactly noise. 
see noise sequences uh, noise signals are usually random so uh, we cannot predict what will be the value of the uh, next uh, sample in the case of a noise signal but pseudo noise sequence repeats after a particular interval and that is the reason why it is called pseudo noise it has the properties of noise but it is periodic in nature so let us see pseudo noise sequences they are binary sequences it seems to be random binary sequences but are deterministic and repeat after a certain length why they are called noise they have noise like properties what is the noise like property that they have just as the autocorrelation function of a noise signal is a delta function the autocorrelation function of pn sequences are highly peaked for zero shifts and almost zero for small shifts to the either side the autocorrelation function is uh, we are correlating the signal with itself so a signal adumayittu thanne compare cheyumbo if there is no shift then they are exactly the same so out of delta function varu but nammal shift cheyidu kaniyal they are totally uncorrelated so it will be almost zero adhe property namukku ivada pseudo noise sequence nu kaanan pattu pseudo noise sequence inde auto correlation aanu njan plot cheyidirikkunnathu appo avadu nammal nokkumbo kaanan pattum shift illengil adana oru peak aanu varunnathu shift cheyidu kaniyal adu it is a value almost around zero pseudo noise sequence repeat cheynadu konde ee auto correlation function um periodic aayittu namukku kaanan pattu so hope you have understood that if why it is called noise because it has noise like property and the property is the auto correlation function of the noise is a delta function that means delta means a, a peak at zero and rest of the values are all zero same way the pn sequence also the pseudo noise sequence also will have a similar property they have a peak when there is zero shifting the correlation of the signal with itself but if you are going to shift one of the signals and then take correlation then it will be almost zero so adana nammal noise property noise like property nu parayam ini what is a pn sequence generator appo namukku ee sequence generate cheyan veikkina circuit ne aanu nammal pn sequence generator nu parayunnathu now what does it consist of as shown in the figure it consists of a series of flip flops so it is basically a shift register and the output of the shift register is given to a unit called logic so that logic actually acts as a feedback you can see that the output of the logic is given back to the first flip flop so this logic is called feedback logic okay so you can see there are m flip flops and output of the mth flip flop is the output sequence the output of the other flip flops are given back to the logic and which forms the feedback so let us read pn sequences are generated using shift register circuits with feedback from one or more stages so here you can see feedback from all the stages but it need not be uh, there can be feedback from selective flip flops a feedback shift register has m flip flops as shown in the figure and the logic circuit that are interconnected to form a multi loop feedback circuit so there is a feedback the logic uh, is actually a feedback logic the flip flops in the shift register are controlled by the same clock pulse you al already know shift register means there there are actually flip flops uh, made of flip flops and uh, this flip flops will have a clock input and all the clock signals will be triggered at the same time mm -hmm. so at the tick of the pulse that is when a pulse occurs the state of the flip flop is shifted to the next down the line so the output of one flip flop is given to the input of the next flip flop and so on so whatever is there in the output of one will go to the two and whatever in two will be stored in two and whatever 
already the output of 2 will be stored in the flip flop 3 and so on. And the length of the PN sequence is dependent on the number of search registers, its initial state and the feedback logic. Uh, we will see that the, uh, the length of the sequence will depend on the number of shift registers, its initial state, what is the initial state of the flip-flops and the feedback logic that we are using. So we will see that in a detailed way. Now one category that we use is linear feedback shift register, it's called LFSR. So in L, if it is a linear shift feedback shift register, then the feedback logic will be modulo 2 adders. A shift register is said to be linear if the feedback logic circuit consists of modulo 2 adders. So they are basically XOR gates, XOR symbol or XOR property on kind of uh, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 0. That's modulo 2 and So, same as that of X. So, so another two table I can Something to be noted in LFSR, the 0 state is not permitted. That is, all flip flops should not be in 0 state. If such a state come, then it will not work as a uh, it will not generate a PN sequence. Now the period of a PN sequence cannot be more than 2 raised to m minus 1. We have m flip flops. So the period of the PN sequence generated by this LFSR cannot be more than 2 raised to m minus 1. So it will be less than or equal to 2 raised to m minus 1. And if the length of the PN sequence is equal to 2 raised to m minus 1, then it is called a maximal length sequence. We will see what is the meaning of all this in the coming slide. So, what it means is the, the length will be less than or equal to 2 raised to m minus 1. If the length is 2 raised to m minus 1, such a sequence is called maximal length sequence. So, there are some specific properties with this maximum length sequence and there are some uh, specific connections which will produce this maximum length sequence. We will see that in the coming class. Now we will see a particular case, a, a particular example of a linear feedback shift register. Now why we call it a linear feedback shift register? Because a feedback path is a, in the feedback path you have feedback logic, there is a modulo to adder. And the modulo to adder, I see there are three flip flops, one, two and three. The output of the first flip flop and output of the third flip flop is taken and given to the modulo to adder. And that output is given as the input of the first flip flop. Now what is a modulo to adder? It is almost similar to that of an XOR gate, but it is not XOR gate. Because in modulo to adder, what happens is 0 plus 0, it is 0, 0 plus 1, it is 1, 1 plus 0, it is 1, and 1 plus 1, it is 0. So the true table will be same as that of XO, but it is an adder actually. Now 1 plus 1 will give you actually 1 0, so you take the MSB of that 0 alone. So that is modulo to adder. Now let us see this uh, table. We have uh, pulses given, we have S0 which is S1 modulo to addition S3. So you can see S1 modulo to addition S3. And uh, we have uh, the pulses in the order S1, S2, S3. So the initial pulse, we have to assume an initial state. We already discussed now, the length of the sequence depends upon the number of flip flops, the initial state and the feedback logic. So initial state is important. So I am assuming initial state as 1, 0, 0. So when it is 1, 0, 0, remember here it is 1, here it is 0, here it is 0, or the state of the flip-flop is 1, 0, 0. Now what happens is 1 and 0. So this S1 and S3, they get XOR. So X1 and S3. So 1 XOR 0, sorry, 1 modulo to addition 0 is 1. That is written here. And this gets shifted in, right? So S1 becomes 1, this 1 becomes shifted, this 0 gets shifted, and this gets shifted out. Now, what happens? 1 modulo to addition 0, again 1. This comes into S1, 
this one gets shifted here and this one gets shifted here. So it is 1, 1. Again, 1 modulo 2 addition 1 is 0. So that 0 comes here. This one gets shifted, this one gets shifted. The last, last one is shifted out. Again, 0 and 1. 0 modulo 2 addition 1 is 1. This one is written here. This 0 is shifted here. This one is shifted here. Again, 1, 1. Modulo addition is 0. This 0 is written here. Next is 1. Next is 0. Again, 0, 0. It is written here. And then we have 0 shifted and then 1 shifted. Again, 0 and 1. Modulo addition is 1. 1 is written here. 0 is shifted. 0 is shifted. Again, 1 and 0. Modulo addition is 1. Then 1 and 0. Again, 1, 0. Modulo addition is 1. This written is here. 1 is shifted. 1 is shifted. 0 is shifted out. Again, 1 and 1. 1 and modulo addition 1 is 0. The 0 is written here. 1 and 1 shifted. Again, 0, 1. It is 1. 1 written here. And uh, 0 and 1 is shifted. So if you have any doubt in this calculation, please pause the video and go through this table one more time. Okay, because you have to be very thorough with writing the table. Now let us see. We see that the initial condition is 1, 0, 0 and this is repeated after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So after 7 pulses, we see that the sequence is repeated. See, 1, 0, 0, again 1, 1, 0, again 1, 1, 1, it is repeated. Now, we see the number of flip-flops are 3. And what is our uh, um, max, what is the maximum possible length? 2 raised to m minus 1, which is equal to 7. So, we see here, after 7 pulses, uh, we see that the sequence is repeated. So, this is an example for a maximum length sequence. It need not be the case everywhere. Sometimes the length might be 4. After 4, it gets repeated. Sometimes, so depends upon the, we told you know, it depends upon the flip flops, number of flip flops 3, it depends upon the feedback connections, and it depends upon the uh, uh, initial state. So, uh, okay, now uh, sorry, the initial state is 1 0 0. Okay, so any of the other state could be the initial state, but uh, the sequence generated will be a cyclic shift of the present one. Now it is like this, if any one of these is, if 1, 1, 1 is the present state, then you will get next 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, again 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So it will be a cyclic shift of this present sequence. Now here the sequence will repeat after 7 pulses. So this is an example for a maximum length sequence. Now what is the output that you get? Uh, I am doubtful whether I wrote the correct output. It's 3, no? So it is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So you see the M must be, uh, this is 3 bits. 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Again it will be 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. It will get repeated. So, whatever comes as the output of S3, no, we will write it as the output sequence. Now, what are the properties of this maximum length sequence? So, every sequence will not be maximum length. Maximum length means it is length is 2 raised to m minus 1, where m is the number of flip-flops. One property is called the balance property. Uh, it's an important property of maximum length sequence. The property says that the number of ones will be more than the number of zeros. So, let us see the previous case. See, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. The number of zeros are 3, the number of 1s are 4. So, number of 1s will be always 1 more than the number of zeros. That is the first property. That is called the balance property. Second property is called the run property. So, what is a run? A run means consecutive 1s or consecutive zeros is called what? Runs. So, even a number can be consecutive 2 zeros. So, it is a run of zeros and uh, uh, 1, 1, 1. That is a run of 1s. Okay, 0. 0 means it's, it's a run but it is only one digit. 
one means also also run but it's one digit among so what is the property among the runs of ones and zeros one half the runs are of each kind of one one fourth are of length two one eighth are of length three and so on so one half of the runs are of each kind of length one one fourth will be of length two and one eighth will be of length three and so on as long as these fractions represent meaningful numbers so in our case we had zero zero one 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 zero one now it has one run of length three Alright. It has one run on the three length three or the one run on the length two or the one run on the this one zero zero and two runs of length one like one zero on the one so each of a kind there is one so there are totally two runs. The ones we have just seen now run means consecutive ones or length zeros when they are runs on the other another. So here the sequence in the other is one 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 other run on the it's a run of length three, zero zero. It's a run of length two. Then the individual numbers now they are also run of length one. Now run property says that one half of the runs. So when we have four runs on the, but one run of length three, one run of length two, two runs of length one. Okay, one two three four five six seven seven. Another one. Another one. Another one. मूंदे In one eighth or of length three and so on, as long as the fractions represent meaningful numbers. अपन इवरे नमक one eighth उन्ना बराई नंदा पर शायद अद that fraction should represent a meaningful number. So fraction meaning of the number number round the number we have one length. अपन नाले runs अंदर अदले half is of length two length one one by fourth that is one. Is of length two and one by eight, but one by eight is not meaningful. One by four is meaningful, so one by four of length three. You know, if you will see a flip flop on angle, maybe seven flip flops. Okay, all I need to give you will give a, I will get a larger output sequence, and from that larger output sequence, you have to find the length runs, and then you should find how many runs of length three. How many runs of length two are there? How many runs of length one are there, and so on. So, our third one, our key property, we can find out. But the third property is called correlation property. The correlation property states that the autocorrelation of the maximal length sequence is periodic and binary valued. Okay. We will see that. This is our number. Um, binary sequence generated zero zero one 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 zero one zero zero one 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 zero one. So it is repeated. This is our number of binary sequence. If in the auto correlation function, it will go. That means what we do is uh, we will take the uh, correlation with itself. So E sequence, that same sequence might be correlated. Correlated, but we just multiply it, add it. So what you find then it will be maximum. That value will be maximum. But if you shift by one, if you are taking this signal and same signal, but you are going to shift by one location, and then you are going to take the product and take the sum, then that will be a value, a very low value, value approximately equal to zero. So you find that. After seven shifting it seven times, what you will get the same sequence. So shifting after seven times, you will get again the peak. So exactly same. I remember I can peak it another. A little portion shifty the, two portion shifty the, three portion shifty the, the left load shifty the, right load shifty the value. When you take the product now, it will be a value approximately equal to zero. This is another auto correlation function. So auto correlation function. We need to come to. 
auto correction machine will have a peak only when there is zero shift or it is after the period otherwise the value will be all approximately equal to zero ivada ningalku nokkande oru karyam ee oru bit inde duration aanu tc ennu parayunnathu appo n bits verumbo adinde duration aanu ntc ennu parayunnathu ivada ningalku kaanan pattum ee value എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് വൺ ബൈ എൻ ആയിരിക്കും സോ ഇത് സെവൻ ആണെങ്കിൽ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി വൺ ബൈ സെവൻ ഇവിടെ സീറോ സോ ടി സി വരെ ടി സി എന്ന് പറയുന്നതാണ് ഒരു ബിറ്റിന്റെ പീരീഡ് അപ്പൊ അതുവരെയാണ് ഈ പീക്ക് ഉള്ളത് അത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ സീറോ ആയിരിക്കും പിന്നെ അടുത്ത പീക്ക് വരുന്നത് എൻ ടി സി ദറ്റ് മീൻസ് ആഫ്റ്റർ വൺസ് വൺ പീരീഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർ എൻ ടി സി എൻ ടി സി ഇസ് എ ടൈം ഫോർ ദി എൻറ്റയർ പീരീഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർ എൻ ടി സി ഇറ്റ് വിൽ റിപ്പീറ്റ് അഗെയിൻ so ntc le vindum it will be peak and so on and the last figure is the uh, fourier transform of the autocorrelation function the fourier transform of the autocorrelation function is the power spectral density so here you are given the plot of the power spectral density so you can see that the power spectral density is a discrete value so you can see only samples are at certain times and in like the time no corner the the interval between two samples is 1 by ntc ntc is the period so the difference between two samples will be 1 by ntc and you can see a uh, zero it is a peak at 1 by tc it is zero 2 by tc it is zero 3 by tc is zero, so on. similarly one minus 1 by tc it is zero minus 2 by tc also it is zero and so on so this is the property of the power spectral density we will see the explanation of that um, and derive some expressions for that so we are continuing the correlation property we are writing c of t denote the waveform of the maximum length sequence so c of t is this waveform now period of the waveform is tb which is equal to n times tc so tc is the duration of one um, bit of data so n times tc will be the total period of the waveform so it repeats after tb so what is auto correlation auto correlation is 1 by tb integral minus tb by 2 to tb by 2 because total period is tb we will take from minus tb by 2 to tb by 2 c of t into c of t minus 2 d2 so c of t is the waveform c of t minus 2 is a shifted waveform so for various values of tau you will uh, find so when t uh, when tau equal to zero it is ct into ct so it will be the signal with itself with no shifting when t tau equal to 1 you will multiply ct and ct minus 1 that means ct and ct shifted by 1 one one uh, by one unit and so so tau lies between the interval minus t by 2 tb by 2 to t plus tb by 2 so that is auto correlation and when you do that you will get the equation like this it is equal to 1 minus n plus 1 by ntc into modulus of tau where when tau is less than or equal to tc and minus 1 Minus one by n for the remainder of the period. That is what we plotted here. When in the interval minus t c to plus t c, it will be one minus n plus one by n n t c into modulus of tau. For other time, it is equal to minus. See, this is the level zero. It is less than zero, so it will be minus one by n. the remainder of the period so this is the equation for the auto correlation function now when we are comparing it with the noise waveform we find that the auto correlation function looks similar to that of the random waveform and uh, the power spectral density you know this function both of them have the same power spectral density that is what pseudo noise sequence and a random sequence random sequence means it is completely random we cannot predict the value of the next sample both of them auto correlation function look the same for power spectral density they have the same envelope what's the difference 
maximal length sequence is periodic so power spectral density is discrete so you can see here no the discrete values are there discrete samples are there but a random sequence it is non periodic so it will be continuous so it will be having the same shape same shape but it will be continuous so for random noise it is continuous for maximal length sequence it is discrete so that is the difference between a random noise and a pseudo 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 noise in fact this is pseudo random noise actually so hope this is clear for you the, the properties of maximal length sequence basically three properties balance property run property correlation property correlation property is little bit elaborate so you have to write all the points okay now uh, if there are two shift registers uh, see what are the feedback taps for a maximal length sequence if you want to get a maximal length sequence with the two shift registers you should get the feedback from the second and the first flip flop if it is three you have to take feedback from third and one if it is four you have to take feedback from four and one if it is five shift registers you can get maximum length sequence by taking feedback from five and two five four three two or five four two one so our various combinations are not another uh, or, or, or each length of the shift register what are the possible combinations by which you can get maximal length sequence so you find that as n increases that is n is 2 raised to m minus 1 increases the pseudo random waveform becomes closer to a random waveform n kodi kondi irikkumba endana repetition time it will repeat after a long time so it will be somewhat closer to random waveform so n in the limit n tends to infinity the two becomes identical so n infinity anengile which are 2 raised to m minus 1 is infinity then uh, the pseudo noise sequence will be same as the random noise they will be the same because it will repeat only after n equal to infinity such an uh, it will never repeat that is the meaning but what is the cost the cost is the increasing the storage requirements you require n equal to infinity means you require a large number of flip flops so that means storage units are required so the hardware cost increases uh, and uh, the storage also increases but you cannot have infinite storage so what will happen we will limit the value of n so if you limit the value of n the number of sh shift registers will also be limited so that is the uh, limiting factor so how much storage we can spend ഒരു നല്ല സ്റ്റോറേജ് നമുക്ക് പ്രൊവൈഡ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുമെങ്കിൽ ബിഗർ സീക്വൻസ് ദാറ്റ് വിൽ ഗിവ് യു എ മോർ എന്താ എൻഡ് റിസൾട്ട് ഇസ് എ മോർ സെക്യുവർ കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ അപ്പൊ നമ്മുടെ എന്തോ ഇവൻ ഇൻ മെനി കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ വി ആർ യൂസിങ് സ്യൂഡോ റണ്ടം സ്യൂഡോ നോയ് സീക്വൻസസ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് പ്രൊവൈഡ് സെക്യുവർ കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ആൻഡി ജാമിംഗ് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടീസ് ഒക്കെ ഉള്ളത് കൊണ്ട് we will use this pins we will see in the next uh, class how pn sequences pn uh, sequences used for sp spread spectrum communication okay now one more topic is there called generator polynomial so here i have drawn a general case of uh, flip flops flip flops uh, you can see flip flops are there a uh, feedback path are there uh, uh, the output of the flip flop is given to the logic block and the output of the logic block is give, shifted to the flip flop one you take the output of the uh, from the fourth okay it is not the fourth one nth one nth flip flop so you take the output from the nth flip flop so you can write the general equation as x of x raised to n is equal to summation i equal 0 to n minus 1 ci into x raised to y so x raised to y it represents the output of each of the flip flop and c0 c1 c2 c3 is the output connected to the logic sorry c1 c2 c3 cn is the output connected to the logic so some cases 
by b c1 equal to 0 means there is no connection c1 equal to 1 means there is a connection okay so the general equation i can write it as x raised to n is equal to it is actually doing a modulo to add uh, it is doing the modulo addition there now uh, when we are doing the modulo to addition on both sides that is x raised to n modulo to addition x raised to n right side also you will do the same process but what happens is then the summation becomes i equals 0 to n earlier it was i equals 0 to n minus 1 but now we are adding one more term so it will be i equal 0 to n ci xi now what is modulus x of n modulus of 2 x of n it is 0 so what happens is you get an equation of the form ci xi summation i equals 0 to n ci xi which is equal to 0 this polynomial is called a generator polynomial okay so don't need to worry about that we will see an example see suppose uh, this kind of figure we already saw you have four flip-flops and the output of the fourth flip-flop and third flip-flop is connected to the modulo to addition and then it is given fed back to the first first flip-flop so in that case what is the generator polynomial your generator polynomial is 1 plus x3 plus x4 so if you are given a generator polynomial you can draw the corresponding shift register so what does it mean 1 plus x cube plus x4 that means there is a feedback from third flip-flop and fourth flip-flop and that is given as input to the first flip-flop as simple as that so remember fourth flip-flop means there should be four flip-flop will be there first second third and fourth output of the first flip-flop you don't do anything output of the second flip-flop you do not do not don't do anything output of the third flip-flop and output of the fourth flip-flop you XOR and give it back as feedback so from the generator polynomial you can draw the LFSR circuit and from the LFSR circuit you can write the generator polynomial so if you are asked about generator polynomial write this topic ok now I'll give you I leave you with a problem see I have, I have taken a problem so this is another another way of representing LFSR circuit linear feedback shift register so you can see there are three shift registers x1 x2 x3 here also output of x2 and output of x3 is fed back to x1 and you are given the initial content 1 1 1 now what you have to do is you have to write the sequence generated so what is the various x1 x2 x3 when it is uh, fed back okay. then you should write the output sequence output is at the output of the third flip flop what is the data coming at the output of the uh, third flip flop that is the output sequence and write the generator polynomial also what is the generator polynomial for this LFSR circuit so please do that and submit and as an assignment you can submit Okay, so I hope uh, this is clear for you. So please go through this, uh, study it well. Uh, again, link comments lagata phaga onu ditte kekka. And if you have any doubts, you can please come back. Okay, thank you.